Hello, today we will be solving this problem called bookshop. So we are in a bookshop which sells n different books and we know the price and the number of pages of each book. And we have decided that the total price of our purchases would be at most x. So what is the maximum number of pages we can buy? And we can buy each book at most once. So the first line of our input would contain two integers n and x, n representing the number of books we have and x representing the maximum price we would spend. Then follow two lines, each containing n integers. The first line represents the price of each book and the second line represents the number of pages of each book. So in this example, an optimal solution would be buying the first and third book and in that case the cost will be 9 and the total number of pages will be 5 plus 8 which is 13 and we cannot do better than that. A word about constraints here, n can be as large as 8000 and x can be as large as 10 to the 5th then the price and the number of pages of each book can be as large as 8000 as well. So let's go to the drawing board and try to come up with a solution. So this is our example. We have 4 books and we allow ourselves to spend at most $10. And we need to find a combination of books such that their total price is at most 10 and the number of pages is maximum. So the first idea that would come to mind is to go through all possible combinations of books and to check which one gives us the maximum answer. So if we go ahead and do that, we will find that these are all the possible combinations. The first one is not buying any book at all. The second one would be buying the first book, then the second book, third book, fourth book, then this would represent buying two books. Then this would represent buying 3 books and finally this would represent buying all 4 books. So we could go through all these combinations and for each one, checking if the price is less and or equal to 10 and then updating the maximum number of pages. And as we saw before, for each of these combinations, there is a binary number that corresponds to each one. So for none, it would be similar to not choosing any of these books. So we will not choose the first book, nor the second, nor the third, nor the fourth. And for this one, it would be similar to choosing the first book. So that we will put a one here and the remaining would be zeros. For this combination, for example, we chose the first, second and third book. So these would be like this. So each one of our combinations here can be mapped to a number between 0 and 15. So as we saw, none would map to this, one would map to this one, two would map to this one, three would map to this one, four would map to this one, and so on. And here we have a total of 16 possible combinations. And why 16? Because we have 4 possible books. So this is equal to 2 to the 4th as we saw. And this makes sense because for each book we have 2 choices. Either we take it or we don't take it. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 would be equal to 16. But as we see here, the number of combinations is very large. It is exponential in terms of n. And since n here can be as large as a thousand, our complexity will be 2 to the thousand, which is larger than anything you can conceive. So this approach will not work. And therefore we cannot go through all possible combinations of books and checking for which one the sum. And therefore we cannot go through all possible combinations of books and check in which ones sum up to a price smaller than our threshold and then uh, updating the maximum number of pages. That's why we need to come up with a different approach. So to understand the inner workings of this problem, let's go ahead and work out this example. So we're gonna start with an available price of 10 out of the 10 we are allowed to have 
and the books used so far are none and the number of pages we have is zero since we haven't bought any books so far then our first choice would be buying the first book so if we buy the first book our available price would be six because we spent this four and the books we used are this book book number one and the total number of pages we have so far is five then we will do the same thing with book two our available price would be two now because we spent eight and the books we used is book number two and the total pages we have is 12. next with three if we buy book number three our available price would be five because we spent five the books we used is book number three and the number of pages is eight and the same will be done with book number four then we will proceed from here again we have an available price of six and we can buy any book except the books we used so far so we cannot reuse book but so we cannot rebuy book one so this means that we only have two other choices buying book three or book four and we cannot buy book two because we only have six dollars here so if we buy book three our available price will be one because we spent five and the books we used are books one and three and the total number of pages is 13. and if we buy book four our available price will be three because we spent three here and our total number of pages is six and we will do the same thing with respect to this state and to this state and we cannot expand this state further because we only have two dollars available and we cannot buy any book with two dollars so what we can notice here are is that this state is exactly identical to this state and this state is identical to this state and this state is identical to this state and if we were to carry on from here we'll have to process each of these states again and again and as we saw before this is an indication that we will be using dynamic programming to reduce complexity but it still is clear how we can translate these states into dynamic programming states so for each state we need to know the available money we have and we need to know the books used so far and if we have these two informations we will know how to transition from a state to another and for each of these transitions we will update the maximum number of pages we can reach but let's see now why do we require these two informations so the available money is really necessary because it tells us what other books we can buy so if we are at this state we know that we cannot buy any book whose price is larger than two but here the books used so far are kept as a list here but why do we need them at all as we saw we needed to keep track of the books used so we will not use a book again because in our problem we are not allowed to use the same book twice and that's why we kept the books used here so that when i move from this state i know that i cannot reuse one and if i am at this state i know i cannot reuse one nor three so this is the only thing that this information is useful for so instead of having some very complicated 2d dp where we will keep track of both available money and books used and we wouldn't even know how to keep track of books used are we gonna keep them in a bit cell or in a set or something like that so instead we can just process the books in order so to demonstrate that i will say that first i'm only allowed to use the first book so what are the transitions i can make i can go here and that's pretty much it then if i allow myself to use in the second book then i can go here and i'll try to expand this node as well but since the price here is only six and this requires eight i will not be able to update this any further then i'll try to use this third book and that will allow me to visit this node and then for each of these already visited nodes i'll try to use this book again and this will allow me to visit this 
and I cannot expand this book any further. And finally, if I allow myself to use this book, then I can visit this state, this state, and this state. And this way you can see that I did not visit these redundant states again. So this is already a step forward. And this way, instead of keeping track of the books used so far, I can just process books in order and this will take care of that. So my DP now only has one dimension. So all what I need to take care of now is to know for each available money from zero to max, for book one, for example, what is the maximum number of pages I can buy? And that will allow me to construct the next layers of my tree. So let's go ahead and work out this example again using these new observations. So to work out this example here, I will make use of this table and it has two dimensions. Here are the prices going from zero to the max 10 and here are my books. So at the beginning, I would pretend that I don't have any books and I would fill this row representing the maximum number of pages I can get using only no books. Then I will allow myself to use one book, then I will allow myself to use book two and one, and so on. So if I am not allowed to use any book, so all of these will be just zero. And then now I'm allowing myself to use this book, but if the price I can afford is zero, then I will not be able to buy this book, so the max number of pages is still zero, and this will go on until I get to value four. So at value 4 here, I can afford to buy this book and the number of pages I will get is 5. And 5 will remain the maximum number of pages I can make even if the price is larger than 4 because I only have this book and I can, and I can only buy it once. So all these values will be equal to 5. Now I'm allowing myself to use the first two books. So if the price, if the maximum price is zero, I still can't buy any book. And this will go on again up to three. So all these will be zeros. Then if I have four dollars, I, I again will buy the first book. So this will be five. And again for five, I can only buy the first book. So this will be five as well, five, five. But notice what happens here at value eight. If I have eight dollars, then I can buy this second book and it will give me 12 pages so the answer here will be 12. so now i have nine dollars and what are the possibilities here i can choose not to use this second book and if i don't use it the maximum number of pages i can have is what i got so far which is five meaning if i choose not to use this book too then my answer will be just what i got from the previous row this represents the maximum answer I can get if I have $9 and I use all the books up to 2. But it is clear that this is not optimal because if I use the second book, then I can obtain 12. But is 12 the max I can get? In this case it is, but we need to make sure that we check for something else. So I have $9, I buy the second book, then I have $1 left. So I need to see if there are any books I can buy with $1. And where do I check for that? I will just go to the previous row, which is here, and see the maximum number of pages I can buy using $1. And in this case, it is just zero. So my answer is indeed 12. And again here, I have $10. So either I choose not to use the second book, and in that case, my answer will be just five, or I choose to use it and my answer will be 12, which is clearly better. Then I will have $2 left and I will check what is the maximum number of pages I can get if I use $2 and the answer is zero. So my answer is still 12. Now moving on to book number three. If I have zero dollars, then I won't be able to buy anything. The same goes on for one dollar, two dollars, three dollars. If I have four dollars, then I can get the answer directly from the previous row and this will give me five. But now notice what happens when I have five dollars. 
I can either not use this third book and if I don't use it the answer will be 5 or I can use it and the answer will be 8 and since 8 is larger than 5 then this will change to 8 and I will have spent all my money so I will not check for anything else now moving to 6 I can either not use my third book and get 5 or I can use it and get 8 and I will have a remainder of $1 and with $1 I can see here that I will not be able to buy anything else so the answer is still 8 now 7 uh, the optimal answer will be using book 3 so I get 8 and with a remainder of $2 I still can't buy anything so now I am at position 8 I can either not use this third book and if I don't use it then the maximum answer is 12 or I can use it and I would get 5 with a remainder of 3 and with $3 I cannot buy anything so I'd rather not use this third book so the answer the maximum answer here will be just 12 and it corresponds to not using this third book moving on to 9 I can again I can either not use this book and if I don't use it my answer will be 12 or I can use it and if I spend five dollars on this book I'll get a number of pages which is equal to eight and I will have a remainder of four dollars and from the previous row I see that with four dollars I can afford five pages so my total answer will be 8 plus 5 which is equal to 13 which is better than the actual value here so instead of this i would have 13 and it corresponds to using this book and this book and finally here again i will start by just bringing down the previous value which corresponds to not using this book and then I will check what happens if I buy this book I will get 8 pages and I will have a remaining of $5 and from the previous row I see that with $5 I can afford to buy 5 pages so this gives me 13 and 13 is indeed better than 12 and finally for the last row this is still 0, 0, 0 but if I have $3 I can buy this book and it is better than the previous zero I had here so this would be one here if I have four dollars I can either not use this book and get five or I can use this book and get one and I will have a remaining of one dollar but with one dollar I cannot buy anything so I'd, I'd rather not use this book moving on to five I can either uh, have the previous value which was equal to 8 or use this book and get a number of pages equal to 1 with a remainder of $2 but with $2 I cannot buy anything so the answer is 8 here and with 6 again I can either not use this book and get 8 or buy this book and get 1 page plus 6 minus 3 which is 3 but with 3 I cannot get any pages so the answer is still A, again here A, and I will have a remainder of 4, and with 4 I can get 5 pages, but 1 plus 5 is 6, and it's less than 8, so I'd rather not use this last book. Again here I can get 12 if I don't use this book, and if I use it I will get 1 page plus a remainder of $5, and with $5 I can get 8 pages for a total of 9 pages. But 9 is still less than 12 so I'd rather not use that last book and we can see that it is optimal not to use this last book even here and here so our final answer will be 13 as we saw and to formalize what we just did let's write the actual formula here so dp at some position ij which means that we can use the first i books and we have j dollars would be equal to the maximum of dp of i minus 1 j and this would correspond to not using the book i and the reward i plus dp of i minus 1 
j minus cos i. So at each position we will make the following choice. Either we don't use the book i and our score will be just the previous value which is represented by dp of i minus 1j or we could use this book i and this will give us a reward i in this case it is the number of pages we would get if we buy the book i plus we would have some remaining money which would be equal to j the money we started with minus the cost of buying book i and with that money we will see the maximum reward we would get from the previous row and taking the maximum of these two will give us our answer so this is a very well-known type of dynamic programming problems which is known as zero one knapsack and i invite you to do more research to get acquainted with the different variations of knapsack problems or to let me know in the comment section and I will do a comprehensive video with the different kind of knapsack problems. And now before moving on to the code, a word about complexity here. We can see clearly here that the number of squares we will visit will be this dimension times this dimension. And here the, this dimension is equal to x, the maximum price we can afford, and this dimension is equal to n. So our total complexity would be n times x and since calculating each cell here is done in all of one, this would be our final answer and n can be as large as 8000 while x can be as large as 10 to the 5th for a total complexity of 10 to the 8 which is within our threshold. This is for time complexity and now a word about space complexity. So here, as we see, we create a two-dimensional array of size n times x and we could reduce that to a memory complexity of just 2 times x. So instead of keeping all these rows, we can just keep the previous row, like here, and when we are at position 1, let's say, we will just compute this as we did and we will just swap these two rows and we'll calculate the values with two in this row. So basically we will just keep two rows, the old one and the new one. Because in this formula we only require row i and row i minus one. So there is no point in keeping all of the n rows. So if the memory constraints are tight, you can keep that in mind. Now let's check out our code. So this is our program. We will start by reading the number of books and our total price. Then we will declare two vectors of ints to keep the price of each book and the number of pages and the number of pages of each book. Then we will go ahead and read these two values. Then we will declare our two-dimensional vector. We will call it max pages and it will have size books plus one and the other dimension will have size total price plus one to include the actual total price and we will initialize it with zero then we will look through all books and for each book we will look through all prices from zero to the total price included and we will start by initializing the max uh, pages for that actual position at i plus one price i'm using i plus one here because uh, my books are zero indexed so the maximum number of pages at position i plus one price i will just initialize it with max pages i price meaning the value in the previous row and if the actual price is larger than the price of book i i will try to maximize my answer with would with what i would have gotten if i bought the actual book i and at the end, I will just print my answer, which will be located at position books and total price. So let's go ahead and submit. So that worked. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.